unbelievable show today. Our guest is uh, Frank Grillo, his latest movie, uh, Lamborghini, but we get into a lot with this guy. Yeah. 58 years old, right? Been around Hollywood for close to, you know, 40 years, been in a ton of movies, yeah. right? We, yeah. And we found this guy quite <laughs> fascinating. It's the first time you've ever met him. I went yeah. out to dinner with him years ago, years ago, but uh, really, really a great guest. Fun time. Fun time we had with Frank. Um, I just wanted to give you a hint on some of the things that Frank and, and Pete and I talked about. Uh, this guy is a crier, right? <laughs> Not too many podcasts talk about men crying. I got to tell you right now, as I look over the table, mm -hmm. did you just take a nap? No, my neck. I can't. I can't turn my neck. Why? What's wrong? No, no, you were. No, no, you, were, you just looked at me and you were like, "I'm trying to." I gotta go to the airport. By the way, by the by the way, I didn't I get let the listeners. I, I gotta let the listeners in. What are you talking about? The time right now is four oh four. Pete's flight is ten forty. We're looking at six hours <laughs> and forty minutes. Right. <clears throat> so I said, "Hey, Pete, you know, after we're done shooting this." You could you could stick around here. You go nah, nah. I got to I got to get near the airport. Right. This guy's gonna leave six and a half hours <laughs> before his flight yeah. to get to the airport. My father don't even do that, really? and he's worried about missing his well, flight. Well, yeah, you know, you get cocky. Next thing you know, you're running late, and you're going, "Why did I do that? For what? For what? To sit back there by myself? Wait, you know, it's a nice gesture, but that's you know." Have you ever missed a flight in your life? One time, Be because out, from out here, I told you one time, yeah, with Brewer, we're going to my uh, Hawaii, and I missed the gig, missed the gig because of it. Yeah, didn't miss it. We we missed getting there a day early because of him. We were late, or just because you overslept. What what was the because reason? Because the traffic coming through, we cut through the canyon, and it was like a tree was down. And it was bumping a bumper traffic, and we missed the flight by a couple of minutes mm. running there. So. Mm. But well, in general, it's chaos in LA. It's chaos. It's chaos. chaos. So this guy was a great hang. We had a blast with him. The hair alone, wow. Yeah. So. Fifty-eight years old doesn't even use dye in his hair. Not, yeah. not, not really hey, one gray hair. Oh, which yeah. one? If I believe that, <laughs> you'll find out on today's cast with Frank Grillo. This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. All right, Frank, thanks thanks for joining us here. Yeah, man. I haven't seen you in at least, I don't know, seven years. We went out to dinner <laughs> a, long a long time ago, uh, and I've been following you on Instagram and, uh, and your career and whatnot, and I thought you'd be an interesting guest for many, many reasons. But I want to start, for those of you guys that don't know, you're not only an actor, right, but you're you're into martial arts, yeah. boxing. You're yeah. in incredible shape. I don't know what you got on your skin. It looks like a fucking oil. Yeah. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> it's my greasy Italian I skin, know. man. Man, you look. I, listen, I know you're only a few years older than me, but goddamn, you look fantastic, bro. <laughs> I'm old. It's good to know it never ends. You're gonna be, women are gonna like hit on you in the coffin at your wake. <laughs> Let's just give him a kiss. We give Frankie a kiss. Uh, I do have you a thirty-year-old girlfriend. Bro. Oh, do you? Jesus uh, Christ. I always vowed not to be that guy. <laughs> and I've been married my whole life. And then now I'm not married anymore. And somehow uh, this girl, and I've been, I'm like, I can't be that guy. I'm not going to be that guy. Right. I will not be that guy. And I am that guy. It's okay. Oh, yeah. It's all right. Let's, <laughs> listen. So, so you're in, in great shape. Has health and fitness always been something that you have been into? Or did you get into this later on in life? No, it's since I was, and I was the weirdo in my, again, I come from an Italian. My father comes from Italy. I come from an Italian immigrant family you know the grandmother the grandfather lived in the garage the whole thing right nobody lifted weights you, you yeah. pushed wheelbarrows that's yeah. what you did right you, you dug holes and you did stuff like that yeah. you, you weren't getting paid for physical uh you know activity it was stupid to do i made them buy me weights when i was like 12 like joe weeder weights that you filled up with sand and i was in my garage and and i always uh was watching what i was eating i went on a kick when i was like 15 all i would eat was peanuts and, and raisins <laughs> wow yeah i didn't want to eat anything and i wrestled my whole life so food became kind of the enemy because i was always cutting weight mm. so it's been a life literally since i was a boy i've been involved in fitness the pursuit of knowledge of diet and and yeah. uh 
you know, I do everything from jujitsu to boxing. I ride motocross bikes. Like everything is physical for me. And then I act too. Like it's that it's, you yeah. know, that's why I don't have a lot of friends that are actors. Cause you know, like I'll walk into a party and they're talking about Chekhov and I'm like, ah, this is not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a great thing, but it's just not my thing. Right. Yes. I'm, I'm taking it all in. I'm taking it all in right now. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So in the last time I think I talked to you, you were going around the world, uh, talking to people with different, uh, Marsh, Marsh, you, yeah, you fight were world. fight world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. talk about that. What, what, what was your, yeah, I was a big Bourdain fan. I loved Anthony Bourdain. I mean, I was obsessed with him. Uh, just what he was doing and who he was and how he kind of melded that together and created something that was singular, right? So my partner and I, Joe Carnahan, I had an idea. We had a deal at Netflix. I had an idea like it's kind of Bourdain-esque. I love not just fighting. I love the culture of fighting, every different culture and why people do it. So we pitched this thing to Netflix where I travel around these locations and do this show. And, you know, we did a whole thing, a deck, and, and they bought it in the room. And I put a, a team together of like 30 people. And I went to each of these countries and kind of embedded myself in the culture, not a tutorial about how to do Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. It was about why these people in, in the, this part of the world, you know, the, how Muay Thai became in Thailand, became such a part of their, their culture. And it, it was great. It kind of changed my DNA. So what, what did you learn coming out of that experience? What's the one thing that you were, you walked away with going, wow, that was amazing? Yeah, it's a great question. What I learned was most fighting styles and most fighting cultures evolve out of oppressively poor pa uh, places. Mm -hmm. People who need to fight, it's the only thing that could possibly get them out of poverty. And it, it was amazing. And But they're very proud people. Like, I did this thing in Myanmar, which used to be Burma, and it's called Letwe. And it's basically Muay Thai, only you could headbutt. And they have 12-year-old kids doing it. And I'm, I have three sons. And I was, I was taken aback by the damage being done to these kids. So I offered to kind of, you know, bring in a doctor and some, some ice. <laughs> Give me kids that like hematomas. Wow. No. They wouldn't, they wouldn't accept that. I offered uh -huh. to give them equipment, to leave equipment with them. They wanted to bang on banana trees. Wow. It's, it was, it's, and they're very, you know, same with Africa. I went to Israel. Um, just life changing experiences with these people. Now, for those of you that don't know what Muay Thai is, what, Muay Thai. what, what is it? Like what, what kind of martial arts? Yeah, is they that? call it the, the art of the eight limbs. So it's fists, it's feet, it's knees, it's elbows. Right. Mm -hmm. And let way, which is a, a, a derivative of that is then you could headbutt too. So imagine your 12 year old son being headbutted well, in the, the jaw. The thing with the headbutt, I got to ask you about that. How come the guy who hits you, how come he's not hurt? He does. They all get hurt. I mean, you, you, but you should. But in the see movies, I do that to you. I'm sipping coffee and you're knocked out. What the fuck is that about? Like, how come I'm not well, knocked out? Well, in the movies, you see guys do this and they punch somebody in the face and the guy goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting you say that because I do a lot of those kinds of movies with Nick Cage. Yeah. And, um, and my thing is, if I have to do these movies, and, I, and some of them I love to do and some of them I have to do, uh, I want to make that part of it authentic. You yeah. Know, because a lot of it is just like ridiculous. Right. You know, it's like the $6 million man. Well, then what would be no, authentic? You headbutt and you both pass you out? You both pass out. You're both going down. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. If you want to hear, hey, where'd you get that? This holiday season, let me tell you, Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe. I'm telling you, man, they go everywhere to find the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your secret Santa or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they might want. Um, uh, personally, I already got, uh, I shouldn't talk about my brother what he is, but I got him this Himalayan salt barbecue plank. Oh my God, is this thing cool. It goes right on your grill of your barbecue. And then on top of it, you put your veggies and stuff like that. It's just a big block of salt that makes everything delicious. And I'm telling you, that's just one thing. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting everything from artists, uh, small independent businesses. And all these fine products are often made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this unique holiday season. I don't even know how long my barbecue Himalayan plank is going to last. 
Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often, as I said, handmade uh, or made in the U.S., baby, which, hey, USA, let's do it. Uh, they have the most meaning, too, because they're out of ordinary gifts. People look at them and know you took time to think about them and what they might like, from art to jewelry to kitchen to home stuff. They even have things you can purchase that aren't their experiences. They're not even good. Like, you know, the beer tasting and wine tasting. It has something for everyone at Uncommon Goods. And with every purchase you make to Uncommon Goods, they give back a dollar to a nonprofit partner of your choice, man. And they've donated more than $2.5 million to date. Now, to get your 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash the cast. That's uncommongoods.com slash the cast for 15% off. I'm telling you, don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon goods. They're out of the ordinary, baby. <laughs> and also, I'm focused, by the way, on, on something you said a little earlier. Uh, sold it in the room. What is that like? <laughs> what the fuck does that like? How does that even work? Like, you know, I never had that. I, I'm sold, always like, we, we, we might not even get back to you, Corey. I'll leak the hell out of here. <laughs> You've sold shit in the room. In the my room. Head. I have. Come on, that. you. That have, I've walked out. I've walked out of a room and I've asked my reps. I go, did we sell that? <laughs> <laughs> and, but never, never like, yeah, no, we'll go with it. Yeah. I don't, yeah. By the way, I was like, usually it's like you know you're doing good, yeah. right? And yeah. you walk out and you're like, okay. And the call comes and it's like we we right. feel good, blah blah blah. We need one more thing. Yeah. They just said, yeah, go with it. And I was like. But were they like, Kathy's going to write up the paperwork. <laughs> you get started. Yes, let's, let's basically, know what. that Holy was it. What do you shit. think you need an episode? Oh, I said, oh. by the way, I, I just, I, I think I said uh, a, a million. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I need but it. don't you even say to them, okay, I still got to go to Amazon. <laughs> Pump the fucking brake. <laughs> <laughs> right? because, because we had made we had made two movies for Netflix. We, oh. we and, and by the way, it, right. it was a time, it was a different time. Yeah. Like we made a movie for six million we got like 11 million yeah. more. You know, it was like a yeah, different time. That yeah. doesn't happen now. Right, right. And uh, so we were, we were in business with them and they were confident that we could execute it because we had done two great things for yeah, them. Yeah. And it was, it was funny, man. And, and yeah. then we were, I went, then I was on the road. And then like, like any jerk, I was complaining. <laughs> I'd be uh, like, I'm not staying in that hotel. Uh, like, oh, man. You're in a place that doesn't really have, you know, the, the St. Regis. Yeah. You have to stay in that hotel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to be comfortable. I'm old. <laughs> I, 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 I want to rewind. You said something that you got three sons, right? Yeah. I got a son. He's only four years I old. I know. I watch him. Right. <laughs> I've watched him grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so have you taught or have your kids, your sons, um, uh, got into martial arts and what are the benefits that you've seen? Because I took my kid to a martial arts class at Gracie right. like, and I wanted to s have him watch first before he got in. Uh, have all three of them taken classes? All and three of them have taken. My oldest son, who's 25, uh, he boxes. He's been boxing since he's, I took him when he was nine. I threw him in a gym in New York City, which we were the only white people. And all, all my friends were black and Puerto Rican and Dominican. And they basically were his quasi father. Like they raised him. I would throw him in there and leave him there. And in the beginning, he didn't like it. Now he's, you know, he's had a couple of smoker fights and stuff. He's a good boxer and, um, he's a, a beautiful human being. I've taken my other sons. I've taught them boxing the same thing. And they're so respectful. Uh, they've become such good kids from boxing mm -hmm. from and, and martial arts is the same thing you'll never find a martial artist or even a, a you know a real boxer out in the street looking to be an, a jerk off yeah. do, do, do you know what i mean yeah. it's just it teaches you discipline it teaches you community which i think a lot of boys need you know to feel my kids don't play sports like i grew up playing football and lacrosse and i wrestled i was never home after school my kids don't do that and i'm not going to force them to but they will box so so that's kind of where we've landed right. but i think every parent girl or boy i think martial arts is a great way to raise a child that won't be necessarily afraid of the world right do, do you know what i mean which i think now is important <clears throat> do you walk around like do you walk around with a confidence because you you know have a i think you have a brown belt or whatever yeah. whatever belt you have with like an aura of 
Yeah. Take you out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, have you, have you ever, I'm not afraid of anybody. Right. That's what oh, I, I've never had. How many people? Wait, one, someone's like, how many people are you afraid of? Most. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. The, you're, see, I, you're, I know, Frankie, you're the kind of guy, though, that like, if I get out of a car and I'm coming at you hot with my words, when you're calm, the calm ones... I back off. <laughs> back, I know right away that's some martial arts shit that yeah. they're disciplined. I would walk you know, away 99 yeah. times out of 100. And probably I, call me buddy a few yeah, times. Yeah, hey, my, buddy. No, I, 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 I got a standard thing because it oh. does happen. I got a standard thing. I say, are you okay? Yeah. And it's trying to, it kind of jars people. It's uh. like, no, I'm not okay. No, I'm, not my, uh, uh, my wife's busting my balls. And I'm like, uh, right, get back in your car, uh, man. It's, uh, it's man. all good. Because the reality is, I can't hurt somebody. <laughs> I mean, that's the, the reality. reality. I mean, that's you the you reality. Don't get back you know what I mean? I that's mean, the <laughs> it's the reality. And I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to. But I, I, you know, it's it's. Uh, I've gotten myself in trouble. You know, and with one problem I had, and again, the guy hit me, and it, it ended up with me uh, trial by jury trying to take my life away because this guy said I did something that I didn't. Uh, and it wound up being his girlfriend who testified against him and said, no, he started it with him. Oh, wow. In any event, you learn that when you're you're in the public eye and you have something to lose, like, you know, houses and, and careers, yeah. I, I don't have a, an ego about how cool or tough I am. I'm 58 years old. I'm yeah. like, it's all good. You're a tough guy. But I'm, I don't, there's nobody, I'm not, I'm not afraid of anybody. Do you, do you know right. what I mean? I mean, I've been doing this my whole but do you ever, life. i am be honest. Have you ever woken up a day in your life and knowing you have this skill, like just think to yourself, I'd love to kick the shit out of somebody today. Every day. I live in LA. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm in this, the entertainment business. I mean, there's more jerk offs in this business than walk the planet. Right. It's amazing. And nobody's ever been chin checked. Everybody's a tough guy. Right, right. Chin checked. Yeah. <laughs> I've never even heard of that one. <laughs> Bro, you're like Sean Penn with better hair. <laughs> no, he's, got, whole, he's got the pen thing going, right? Like cut, rip, ass, cool hang. Like, you know, your, your whole hair looks like it hasn't been indoors since like 1975. Your neck hasn't been under a roof since 1975. Bro, I'm, a manly, I'm a construction bro. guy. I'm Italian. I'm Italian. Yeah. <laughs> <Italian. laughs> <laughs> Just when I thought uh, I was a man, this guy comes strolling in. All of a sudden, no, I feel like a suburban no. housewife. Well, bro, you're you're like a dying breed. I mean, especially being out here in in, in Hollywood. You seem like a guy that would have been in Hollywood, pay me in the fifties and sixties. You have like that. Yeah, little, that's kind of the you know, it's kind of the 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 place I've landed. You know, I didn't volunteer for it, but the stuff that I do do and and. You know, just to clarify, I'm kind of just left of center of mainstream Hollywood. Like the movies I do are a lot of them go are are Netflix movies or Hulu movies. I do some big studio movies, but I've landed somewhere because the pay is really good and I I want to take care of my family. I've landed somewhere in this kind of weird place where maybe one out of every three people recognize me, but one out of every five people know my name. Mm. Uh, it's that thing well even like with the marvel movie correct me if i'm wrong didn't you kind of back out of that because you didn't like the development of the character yeah, well, a little bit yeah i you know which is like yeah hey, it was supposed movie, to go it was supposed it, right? to go one way right yeah. it was, you sign on for seven movies and the first two were wow. great and it was supposed to go one way and it just didn't go that way and not not because of me but it didn't go that way and then they wanted me to come back to the avengers joe russo called me and guy I go, i'm not coming back like you got to come back i go i'm not, not coming back and 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 it, I'm an asshole, and, and my cool guy, and and I go, what do you want me to come back for a scene? I said, you know, they first of all, I never got the money that I was supposed to on the back end because supposedly the movie's still in the red, and uh -huh. yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, I'm not coming back, I'm not coming back, and then my son said, you should do it, and uh, my oldest son, he goes, it's the Avengers, it's a, it's an iconic scene, yeah. they're replaying an iconic scene from the first Captain America, and I looked at him, I wanted to smack him in the face, and then I went, you're right, yeah. <laughs> and I went and I went and did it, and uh, I don't regret it, but but yeah, I mean, it, I, I wasn't happy with it, it was like, it's too bad that, that, but I just got hired by James Gunn, who, who directed all the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, because now he's running DC, so I'm doing uh, Creature Commandos on D in DC, um, for uh, which we just shot, which will come out in 2024. So I, I jumped, I jumped teams. 
Wow. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I'm like yeah. Deion Sanders. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Speaking of movies, awesome. you play you play Lamborghini, right? Oh yeah. Now, did you have any contact with the Lamborghini family in in like researching the role? And did you talk to them in regards to like uh, just to get some history or whatnot? No, you are good. You very <laughs> good. Nah, you got a gift. <laughs> I did. I, well, uh, Banderas was going to do it. And uh, he had dropped out 10 days before principal photography. So Bobby Mresco, who was the director and the writer, he called me and he said, uh, I, I, got, I got a movie, Lamborghini, uh, based on the son's book. His son wrote a book about him. And it's in Rome. I go, yep. He goes, let me send you a script. Not necessary. I'm in. Right? <laughs> I go, you're bringing me to Italy to play Lamborghini. Uh, you know, Banderas is going to do it. It's got to be good. Before you ask somebody else, <laughs> I'll say yes. So I said yes. I read it. And uh, they had already shot half of the movie with the younger with the younger Lamborghini, and I was going to shoot the second half yeah. as 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 he's an adult. <clears throat> and uh, his son, who wrote the book about him, was on set every day. So I got to do as much research as I can in those ten days, and then I had him. Uh, no, the, the Tonino was with me, and through a translator, I'd constantly ask him questions until he wanted to punch me in the face, right. and. Uh, it was a trip, you know, because I don't get to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm an, I'm Italian. I'm an Italian immigrant yeah. going back to Italy to work. We were in Emilia Romagna. We traveled down through Florence to Rome. We shot a bunch in Rome. At one point, I called my mother. Um, she was alive at the time. And I said, Ma, Ma, why did we leave? Why did we leave Italy? She said, where are you? I said, I'm in Florence. She goes, we didn't live in Florence. <laughs> we, we lived in Calabria. <laughs> it's not Florence. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was uh, again another thing that was life changing and brought me back to my Italian oh, roots. That's great. How yeah. nice is that to shoot a movie in the homeland that your parents yeah. immigrated yeah. from? Uh, had had you driven a Lamborghini prior to the movie? No, no, no. I've never driven a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, and uh, I drove a couple of like twenty nine euro million euro cars that they were in like uh museums in rome i had like cops around me i'm like uh, oh my god they'll steal the car where am i gonna go yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you know freaking showbiz man and it's like why i tell my daughter and i know we need certain jobs out there that people do but i'm like it's to, to, to do something that you love like you're sitting home and then 10 days later, you're in Rome driving Lamborghinis. I'm what in the Rome. Fuck's going on, right? I'm in, right? Like, I'm in Rome. And you never know when shit like that's going to happen. And you can walk out thing. of here and you got a message. Hey, life changing. It's happened, ten, it's happened 10, if not 20 times. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And sometimes the, the fall is bad too, right? You know, like sometimes it's something you're about, you, maybe sometimes you're about to go to Rome to do something and they go, don't get in a car. And that's, well, <laughs> no. Uh, the you know, the other thing through. is, there's been a bunch of movies that I was excited to go. I was just going to go to the Basque, Basque country in Spain to do a movie. And in the 11th hour, I got a phone call. It's like, nah, we're, we're not going to do it. We can't do it. Can you do it next? I'm like, nah, don't. If it's not happening now, I can't do it. But, you know, so there's yeah. there's that. And there's also, you get offered a shit ton of money for five days on a movie that you know you're going to have to explain your way out of at some point. Oh, yeah. But, again, growing up the way I grew up, if somebody offers you seven figures for five days, you go, I don't give a shit what it is. Yeah. I'm not Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Right. You, you know what I mean? And I do it. And I do it and I hold my breath for five days and I do as good as I can, but then I go to the bank. Huh. <laughs> are, we, are we talking, we must be talking, as they say, B movies sometimes? Is that what yeah, you're saying? They, or like, I mean, uh, although most like, movies I see, I mean, like I just went and saw Oppenheimer and went, wow, that's a movie. Right. Oh, okay. You're but talking. most movies that I see, I mean, I just there's what Meg Two with J Jason Statham. Right. Is that an A movie? I tell you no. what, whatever it is, it made more money than my left foot. That's right. Daniel Day Lewis. That's I'll right. That so, so I don't follow any B movie, A movie, C movie. Oh. What? I, it well, doesn't you, matter. You don't, you don't owe an apology for whatever movie no, you do. No, but listen, sometimes you do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way about some bits I've. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I you just that. like sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you want ah. your two ninety nine back? I'll give it. <laughs> oh, love the purge you were in, though, mm. man. God damn, was those were good. fun. Those are chilling. Those bought those me a house. Freaking chilling. Yeah. Those, <laughs> yeah. Mm. those bought me a house. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so do you ever, as an actor, in the back of your mind, going, "Is this is this going to end? Am I?" Because I I often talk to people. I go, "There's times I put on tickets, and I'm like, are they going to sell?" Is there a fear that you live in 
yeah. not working. Absolutely. The ice cream is going to melt every day. Yeah. Right? It's like, uh-huh. of course. And it's never the case or hasn't been the case, but I'm kind of glad that I think that way. It's kind of smart to think that way. Do you know? Because at some point it is going to, and I've done movies with all of the big guys, you know, and I'm friends with Stallone and like, you know, and they still think that way. Like, uh, uh, uh-huh. like really? Oh, this isn't going to go away. Do, do you know? Yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. So uh-huh. yeah, I mean, I'm like, you know, when is it going to slow down, or when is the when are the salaries going to start really dropping? When do I need to adjust my my living style? Right. Do, do you know? And because I'm not the guy. I, like, I have beautiful uh, retirement thing and. But I, I never think like that. I'm like, ah, I'll, I'll probably get my money as soon as I'm 60. I'm going to take the money. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I can get the money, I'm going to take the money. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I, I I live with that every day. And this past year, I lived with it a lot. Because, yeah. Because I spent more. I don't spend money. And I bought this house, and then I put a lot of money into it. And then the strike happened, and I'm like, uh oh, you know, because I'm so used to money. And it got to a point where I could I'd get a call to go do a movie. They want me for two days, and it would be six figures mid to high six figures for two days wow i could do that forever yeah yeah damn you know what i mean have you ever been on a movie like one of them that you say like you owe an apology for and a great opportunity came in and you can't do it because you want as you would say this shit thing here i'm doing now i can't get out of it yeah it's happened a couple times and that's the lesson it's like you know maybe Uh, sit at home and don't be an idiot have you ever been like to your agent fuck it i'm just walking off the set i don't give a shit about this you know one thing you never do Uh. you never walk off the set Uh. as an actor you never ever even if you have a problem yeah i've had that like where me and the director have you know i've threatened his life and stuff and my agent would say don't leave the set i said but he threw me off i'm like don't leave the set oh wow yeah yeah there's a lesson for you one i have one question before i forget You had to have auditioned for Rick Grimes in Walking Dead. Did you not? I feel like you would have been a great Rick Grimes. No, who, I, I've never seen Walking Dead. Who plays him? Lincoln something. I can't remember the guy's oh, name. Oh, yeah, Andrew yeah. Lincoln. Yeah, he was yeah, great. Yeah, he was yeah, great, yeah, was, but they, yeah. They were great. I yeah. never, I, my friend Bernthal was on that show, too. Um, you know, my problem is I don't know. I don't get to audition anymore. It's just like, you know, it's been like just, offers. Just, but I don't get offers necessarily that I want. I mean, I just get a lot of offers, but a lot of them I pass on. But so, how do you, do you sometimes, like if Scorsese wanted you to audition, are you going to I have. I yeah. auditioned for Scorsese, and he wound up, we wound up talking, I went to audition for him at the Director's Guild in New York City. I did a, I did the table read. It was, so to get this, I go in, I talk to, I talk to Scorsese at the Director's Guild for an hour. We wound up talking about our pediatrician. We had the same pediatricians. So I get a call from my agent. They go, hey, uh, Marty, I'm like, Marty who? They go, Martin Scorsese wants you to come and do the table read for the irishman it's a script by steve zaley and i said i know what the script is you know the movie the irishman right? he's in it yeah you're in it you're in it i just watched it again that's right you're in it and then i just watched you again with de niro and uh, which was i'm like what is he thinking to himself he's standing next to he's acting with right i mean it was amazing uh, yeah. me and my son watched it oh, i'm like man. good for him man yeah. that's fucking great yeah. in any event I'm on the way to the table read i was living in tribeca at the time they go oh by the way there's a list of guys who are going to be there it's you De Niro, Scorsese, Pesci, Keitel. I'm going, what? What? Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, uh, uh, who else is there? Pacino there? Pacino oh, yeah. sat next to me. He had the glasses. Uh, De Niro sitting here, Pacino sitting there, reaching, talking to each other. I'm going, I don't fucking believe uh, this. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, he's, and, he, and then he would say, like, what's this word? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and then Al's going, leave him alone. Le- read the words. I don't, I'm going, I can't believe. And Pesci, uh, it, was, it was surreal. It was surreal. Yeah, it was it surreal. Crazy. So that was one of the times where they were offering me a role and I wasn't available. Oh, man. What was the role? Do you remember? It was a small role. It was not even a role. You know, I would have done it because of Scorsese, but it wasn't a role that was, you know. Yeah. Um, and when you're in a movie with those guys, it's kind of hard to pop. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you want to work with Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. You know? You want you want to be around Scorsese. I know. Yeah. Like, when he did the freaking, he did the, you were talking about last night on stage about doing the scene with De Niro and Pesci. How do you not be like... This is like I'd be. This can't be real. This is like yeah, truly surreal. surreal right yeah, but now. I didn't feel for a second that you felt intimidated. No, I didn't. Because as an actor, I could always see, you always yeah. see the signs when a guy's nervous, right? Really? Yes. And I never got the like. I never got the feeling you didn't think you belonged there. Oh yeah. Well, 
it should have been there maybe the first take. Uh, it was, <laughs> <laughs> no, for me it was it was it was surreal. I mean, like just like you're sitting there with all those guys, and we grew you know, up with yeah, them. we grew up with them. And next thing you know, you're doing a movie with them. But is there ever a movie role that you passed on that that similar to the Scorsese, like oh, I'm I'm not available that you wanted to do, but you weren't available to do it. That went and the movie went on to success. Like do you ever. Kick yourself in the ass. Go, oh fuck! I wish I would have took taken no, the role. No, because I'm and- not. Listen, I'm not Matt Damon. You know, I'm not getting those kind of movies where I'd go, I, I pass, because there's probably not anything, excuse me, behind it that I would pass for, right? Yeah. But there have been movies where I was so it was me and the other guy. For instance, Green Book. You know the movie Green yeah, Book? Yeah, I was in it. Won Oscars. You were in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you were in it. Uh, Every movie he's talking about, uh, it is. It's nice. Uh, nice to hear. So, Nick. You know Nick? I know Nick. Well, we were going to do another movie together. He comes up. I'm at the saw house. He comes and goes, Frank Willow, I can't believe you're sitting here. I go, me either. And he says, I was just up at CAA. I have a movie. And by the way, lots of guys come up and go, I got a movie. Yeah. And, uh, and he goes, it's about my father. And my father loved you, and we were up at CAA just talking about you. I said, oh, well, that's very nice. I mean, send me the script. It's Green Book. And, and I read the script, and I go, holy shit, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. So I call my agent. I go, dude, th- you have to read this. He goes, no, no. He goes, we're already into it. They, they re- they, he goes, you're one of one. They really want you. Uh, and, oh, my God, who directed the film? Uh, Farley. Bobby Farley. They go, uh, they're going to set up a call with you and Farley. I said, wow, Farley's directing this movie? That's like a a stretch for him, but he's great. And uh, you'll talk to Bobby, and we're going to make a deal. I said, oh, wow, this is great. And and then they told me who was playing the other guy, and I was like, oh, this has has pedigree all over it, right? Three days pass, and I don't hear anything. And I I call my agent. I go, what's going on with Green? But he goes, oh, we don't think it's anything. It's... uh, Bobby's talking to uh, uh, Vigo. Vigo. I said, Vigo? It's an Italian guy. I said, Vigo. I mean, I love Vigo. Vigo's amazing, but Vigo's not right for this movie. They go, no, we don't think he's going to do it. It's small and, and uh, well, there you go. There's the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> ah! And I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts, like that was going to be a special film. Right. And you were in that one too, you son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Frank, you know, you got to sometimes step back and look at like 99% of all actors are out there doing, you know, not working. Yeah, but there's and stuff. 1% that are doing a lot better. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I, I look at. I like the way you think, bro. <laughs> Keep it going, man. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> me go, man. You want to just give him a call and go, guy, Come on, man. Do me down. a favor. Step down, guy. Do me a favor. I mean, how, many, how many Oscar nominations do you need? finish with the Lord of the Rings. Take a fucking vacation. <laughs> Speaking of vacations, do you build in time? I'm off, or are you just constantly Never. working? Yeah, I'm off. He's going to jog home. My father, my father took one vacation his whole life with us right. to the Catskills. Uh, for three yeah. days, we went to a, like, a, lo- a little yeah. hut. I don't Let's know. be honest, by the way. If I was at a hotel pool and he came down with the family, I'd be like, oh, this is going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going to white trash this thing. <laughs> I, I see a lot of tattoos. I, I, I think they're going to be doing cannonballs. No, spiritual <laughs> tattoos, man. Right. But he's going to be ripped all the way. <laughs> They're gonna be looking at his stomach and shit, right? <laughs> but it's just a bunch of lumps. <laughs> Even though you you were raised with a work ethic, right? Yeah, yeah, man. And, and especially with having kids and family, and whatnot. Do you ever look back and go, ah, uh, maybe I was working too much, or any regrets? Yeah, yeah, yeah a- about like being away. And because I, I deal with this, your kids are at home. You're in uh, Montana for three months doing a movie, and they're not coming. They're not coming to Montana. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's my. That's the dilemma. That's the bittersweet part of the of the of having some success. Is you know, and I don't go to Montana. I go to like Croatia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Bulgaria. Wow. And you know, now my kids are fifty. The two little ones are not little. Fifteen and eighteen. But when they were young, I was gone for long periods of time. Yeah. And I had done a TV series that was out here called Kingdom for a few years. And I was trying to get back every weekend. And it was exhausting. And at some point, I realized they didn't really want to see me every weekend because they knew I was leaving. Yeah, like, yeah. It, was a, it was like a, a thing. So I do I do kind of, there's, there's parts of their lives that I've missed that I regret. Yeah. You know, I know people say, I don't have any regrets. I go, well, I do. 
I got yeah. a car I bought that I shouldn't have bought, and this I didn't see my kids as much. Yeah. Um, but you know, I've made up for it. You know, and and uh, I was never expecting to be divorced again. This is the second time I was married for twenty three years. Wow. I wasn't expecting to be divorced, but but the last three years that I've been divorced, I've I've really spent a lot a lot of quality time with these kids, and, and you know, and I think which was a very important time in their lives as they go through you know mid teens to late teens, and it's been it's been blissful. It's been amazing, you know. But uh, look, you can't be traveling around touring, uh, you know, fill, you know, filling up the bank account and living a, giving them a great life and. You it's somewhere it's got to give man. Yeah. it's it does yeah. you, know? Well, you know what i always wonder though like when i hear about like actors saying oh i just i love acting and you know all the other stuff being away from the family i don't like right how come you never see these actors like the ones like let's like, say you live in connecticut or some little town in colorado or wherever do local theater like i never hear like you know some big movie star I'm going to stay home for the summer and we're going to put on a streetcar named Desire now, for $20 a ticket because I just love it. It's to because act. of what he said. It's what? because of what he said. Everyone believes their job may be the last job. Yeah. I swear to God, yeah. like, I'm pals with, like, Mel and Liam Neeson, like, like even these guys. It's like, well, now they're they're getting to a point where, where Liam was making $25 million a movie. I mean, Liam it, that's in the like stratosphere, that. guy, right? I think he's got a gambling and, problem with some of the movies he's making. Yeah, well, because they just keep throwing money at him. <laughs> what does he care? He's 70 years old. Listen, he was Schindler. Yeah. Yeah. What else you got to do? Right. But I mean, <laughs> I get it. You can act. <laughs> taking, but when you're doing Taken 5, it takes away from He's Shinra. taking their money. <laughs> <laughs> Movie Taken 5. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you turn down $20 million? I don't care how rich you are. Right. Yeah, man. You'd be resting on Schindler when they're giving, <laughs> giving you Taken 5? By the way, he did Schindler, nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> Nobody really, he wasn't, he right. wasn't a movie star. Yeah. You know what made him a movie star? Because I was doing The Grey with him uh, when Taken came out. And I was going to go right to video. Wait, The Grey with the one with the wolf? Is that, yeah. You were in that too? Yeah, it's him and me, him. Uh, yeah, that was like the big breakout for me no, in, in as far as big movies. It's a great um, one. It's a great yeah, one. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, so what was the movie that made him so? Take, Taken came yeah, out yeah, and yeah. it was talking about B-movies. This was a time when there really were B-movies. Yeah. And it was going straight to DVD. And then in the last minute, they got a, a theatrical release, and it was a humongous hit. Awesome. Globally. Movie. Yeah. He's off to the races. So you never, you kind of never know what's going to be good and what's not going to be good. Yeah. yeah. Man. He's all over the map. You, you, you've been, you were in Billions, right? One of my favorite shows. I, you, it is? I've yeah. never seen it. Never seen it. I'm friends with Giamatti, and they uh, uh, they called me, and, and they said, we got a cool role, artists. It has nothing to do with what they do, and... Uh, you, with Maggie and two, like three episodes. And I said, oh, I love these guys. They're good. I'm friends with Damien. I'm like, I'm going to go to New York. I'll get to go to New York, see my family. And three episodes somehow turned into eight episodes. And uh, But I've yet to see any of the episodes. Okay, so so that's my next question. Do you watch what you do? Uh, if I produce it, like my partner and I, we did a movie, Boss Level and Wheel Man, and I'm very involved in, in the editorial part of it. So I see every every inch of that. A lot of stuff I don't see. There's yeah. probably 60, 70% of the stuff I've done I've, I don't see. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So how was your experience on that? I just see like, like a lot of dialogue. And as the older I get, right, and I don't know if you have this problem, do you have a problem memorizing lines? No. No, no, no. Because I don't memorize lines, right? I'll read a script, whether it's bad or good, and sometimes it's fucking painful. I'll read a script 50 times. Easy. 50 times. 50 times. Wow. Because Then the circumstance is so embedded in your brain, when you look at the words, they naturally fall into a sequence, mm. right? So you don't have to remember anything. Um, and I learned that a long time. I was on a soap opera in my 20s, uh, Guiding Light, and you did a script a day. It's like 70 pages a day. Wow. So that my, gets you my going. acting teach, my acting coach taught me how not to learn lines. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you learn the story. So you have to read a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot. I have a script in every room and I'll sit down and I'll just pick it up and wherever I open it up, I'll just start yeah. reading. So you, I'm not thinking, it doesn't have to be chronological either because mm, you don't yeah. shoot chronologically. So you want to take it from different places Man. so that whenever yeah, you, yeah. you know, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sitting there 
Now, the, the guy's going to go to the, get the money. The guy's going to get the your money. Stand up. Your stand-up is a show, right? And and there's a sequence that you... And, and one thing takes you to another thing, and then... Uh, the way you do it, you come all the way back to that first thing and the, at, the, at the end and you wrap it all up and it's fucking hysterical. That's the story. Yeah. That's how you do it. It's the same way, man. Yeah, but you know, with stand-up, it's a story that I am just regurgitating. Right. It's my own, it's words, own words. And I'm like retelling an experience that I lived, right? The trouble I've had with acting is taking those uh, skill sets that I've learned in stand-up and applying them to right. the, the acting world. And, and and I talk to a lot of actors just because the line thing is a problem for me because I'm sitting there always in my head right. of like, oh, okay, now it's my turn. Right. Rather right. That's than That's exactly like, the wrong way to do it. Yeah. That's exactly, <laughs> that's exa but it's so common. That's yeah. exactly, you know, listen, you haven't been acting since you're 12, right? Yeah. And, and, uh, but you, you need, as soon as you get in your head that you have to do something, your mind will go the other way, mm -hmm. right? And so if I have to learn these lines, I'm going to do everything in my power not to learn these lines. My mind is going to do everything not to learn these lines. Yeah. So if you're trying to read it like a speech, like you're going to get up in front of people and, you know, you're at Procter & Gamble and you're going to talk about soap, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so try it because you seem to get every movie that uh, I want to be in. <laughs> um, next time, next time you are, try reading a lot, like reading it over and over. Like even if it's if it's if it's boring, read the script twenty times. Wow. Yeah. All right. No, I'll I'll, I'll have to try that. I'm yeah. always looking for tips. Yeah. No. <laughs> to, to to get this right because I I I get really really nervous. I know. When You're not alone. I you I know. go on these sets yeah. for the first time. I, you know. Yeah working with people that have done this over Forever, and over and they yeah. do it in their sleep yeah you know what i mean and and it, you know i can again watching movies i could always tell when somebody doesn't know their lines or or has that's a cut that they finally got to take where the guy got through it mm -hmm. or it's been yeah. i can see they're going back and forth they didn't really want to do that but it's the only way they could get the conversation to, to flow because the guy couldn't remember his lines i've been around guys who are iconic actors <laughs> But they're sweating. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ah, I'm gonna fucking make you feel even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. I know your lines and mine. Yeah. Lines. <laughs> I think it's like even like I've written on some sitcoms and when you're doing the live shoot, yeah. you know, you give somebody like a line on the spot and then like the actor will it's it's so the acting etiquette is like I don't really act, you know, but like I like to write and sometimes I'll be telling like another writer, I'm like, I just want to tell this guy how to fucking say this line. Just throw it away. I, just say, do nothing. But, but uh, yeah, but like, I just, I don't even want to do that charade bullshit. Right. I want to literally say, watch it. Do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> blah, blah, right. blah. Right. You want to give him line readings. As I've like been on the side and then they go to do your line. I'm looking at the guy going, does he, does he not know sarcasm <laughs> at all? <laughs> like, holy shit, you know? But, <laughs> but that's, I, my, one of my early jobs was Gary David Goldberg, who created uh, the show with Michael J. Fox. And I did a show with him that, that Spielberg produced. It was their first TV show, DreamWorks. And it was in front of a live audience. I have never done that sitcom in front yeah. of a live audience. And yeah. you'd work it out during the week. And then Friday you get there and there's people there. Yeah. And it was like, holy, this is this is fun. And I was That's terrible fun. in the beginning. Yeah. I, I didn't get the hang of it. As soon as I got my first laugh. By the way, that was another thing. When you make people laugh. Yeah. It's like, oh, what? That's a feeling that I've never like. Yeah. I, I can make my friends laugh, tell them stupid stories, but when you make people in an audience laugh, yeah, it's fun. Wow. Yeah, especially yeah, yeah when you're doing those kinds. Of, that's the other flip side too. Sometimes I'll write something, and an actor will come in and do it in a way I didn't even envision it, and it's way better. And that's then, what and it should be. Like, that's how I. I'm like, yeah, no, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> that's what everything. It should always be elevated. As yeah. good as it is, it should. That's what the actor's job is: is to elevate it's it so always. So, I'd rather dig a ditch than sit in a room with a script and go, <laughs> "Hello, hello, hello, hello." <laughs> like, but, but he's. I don't know. He's he's saying that's not how you do it. Right. You read it, right. and then the hello fifty times. By yeah, the way. yeah. <laughs> and the hello just comes out right by the way you're not even thinking about yeah it. but i've been on sets hard work where, though where you know it's the physical too like people don't connect their heads and their bodies and where the mind goes the body follows so if you're not right in the mind you you, you know if, if if the if the action is you come over and you pick up this cup you'll see people go <laughs> and i'm like Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll look at the cup when they pick it up. I'm like, just pick the cup up. 
<laughs> That's why you're you, Frank. That's why you're you. I'm this guy. I'm the. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone I got one last one yeah, sorry yeah, have you ever acted and I know you've acted with so many great people so I don't want to disclude the others but wait, one particular person where you're like holy shit this person's unbelievable uh yeah, there's been a bunch yeah. but but uh I, I I and maybe because I was a big fan of his too but when I did the movie with Mel you like it's you're talking to him you're talking to him and then he's on set and he starts doing his thing and you're like Oh, he's a movie star. Okay. He's a movie star. Like, you're like, wow, man. I mean, I'm, I think I'm heterosexual, but I'm <laughs> really attracted wow, to him. Yeah. I mean, he's a movie star. Like, I, I've worked with a lot of great actors that are not yeah. movie stars and they shouldn't, like, they're, they're not movie stars. Yeah. But every once in a while, like, oh, Bruce Willis, too. I've done a couple movies with Bruce yeah. early. And I'm like, oh, man, that, this guy's electric. Like really? It, oh my God! It's you know, really because I, I mean, like to say, "Oh man, I'm as good as that guy. I'm yeah. as good as that." Like you know, because you're I'm a competitive guy, yeah. and it's like you get on set with people like this, and you're like, "Oh, I get it. That's why he's got Planet Hollywood. I get it." Oh, and, you know, he's shit. the guy's a star, right? Yeah. So That's, you're saying there's like an aura these guys. There have, is something, right? uh, and uh, I hate to be the guy to say that. I swear <laughs> to God, that kills me. A little piece of me dies <laughs> <laughs> to repeat this. But there's something about these people, yeah. and, and uh, you're just like, wow. Good for you, man. Can I have you been in the presence of Tom Cruise? <laughs> yeah, I did a movie with Tom Cruise. So, so, Minority Report. You were in Minority, bro. Le, le, no, but let me tell you the story real quick. I, I don't want to bore you guys. No, we're not bored. We're, 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 this is I, riveting. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I get, I get, I get, I go audition for Steven Spielberg, right, yeah. for Minority Report, Jeez. which is a script written by I think Steve Zalian. I think it was like one of those writers that are like, you just go. I, I get the role. Right, I, my agents at the time were UTA. They were like, you, Spielberg just loves you. Like, um, he's like, this is great. This is like a big deal. And I'm uh, like, yeah. And Tom Cruise, and it was when Colin Farrell had just kind of hit the scene, and it was like a great cast. Janusz Kaminski was shooting the movie. Was you know Oscar winning DP. Viggo Morgensen was already doing something else. He's probably God. in that movie too. <laughs> <laughs> in any event, I'm there six months. We'd shoot wow. the movie all over the place. Six months. And, you know, the part of the movie I'm in is a very specific, you know, uh, uh, set, right? And there's different parts of that movie. And every once in a while, I'd look at Spielberg, and he he looked unsure. And I'm like, there's no way they, they could cut the whole thing out of the movie. Because that's what happens in movies. You get cut out sometimes. Cut to this. I do the movie. Great experience. Become friends with uh, uh, Colin. And, and uh, we had a lot of interaction with Tom. And it was, you know, Tom's Tom. So they invite me to... The screening, the the of course to the premiere. I take my mother. My mother's never been to a premiere. My little Italian mother's never been to a premiere. So I go. We we sit. My mother and I sit in a great spot. Stephen is coming down. He makes a speech. As he's coming up, now I'm sitting around big movie stars and big agents. As he's walking up, he sees me and he stops. He goes, Frank. <laughs> like is like Stallone here or something? I don't know. I, and he, I, he comes, he walks past people and gives me a hug. And my mother, I said, Stephen, this is my mother. He goes, oh, it's so nice to meet you. I enjoy the movie. And he walks away. And I'm like, and everybody's looking at me. I'm like, <laughs> right? I'm watching the movie. And about 30 minutes in, I realized the set piece that was really the most thing that I'm in. And it, it should have been what was 30 minutes of the film. is not there. It was cut out. They cut the oh. whole thing out. They cut the piece out, right? But I'm watching, I'm watching, and then I'd see, you know, pieces of what was the set piece. And then at the very end, and at, when I was shooting the movie, Stephen wanted me to do this Indiana Jones look where I turn into the camera and look right down the barrel, right? And I take the helmet off and that was the only thing. I took the helmet off and I looked down the barrel and I said something and that was it. So all the credits go up and I, I am, I don't, there's a feeling I can't even describe to you because I'm so gutted and I, I just don't understand what just happened, mm. right? And this is why I love my mother. <laughs> She looks over to me and she goes, you were the best part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. Didn't say another word. Ah, yeah. Didn't say another word. Rest of right. her soul. Wow. But, uh, but that took me a year to get over. And so there's things like that where uh, it's like, it's just, you know. Did you go to the party after the movie? 
Uh, no, I went to my own party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it was it was terrible. It was man. it was you know it was terribly embarrassing. And then oh, I come to realize man. everybody's got that story. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like everybody's got that story. So so let me rewind here. Does does crew? We often talk about crews on this show. Does does he have the electric? Like oh when, my when, god, he has it more than anybody. So when you're around him, the, the the wattage is unbelievable. I don't get intimidated by people. Yeah, he's intimidating. Really? Or I'm intimidated by him. What one of the two? But what? he is like, man, he is. There's nobody like Tom Cruise. He is by far the biggest movie star I think that's ever walked the planet. Yeah, um, man. Uh, and and one talk about prepare. He does everything. Uh, the man's he's amazing. Anybody yeah. has anything? I, uh, <laughs> regardless of his personal life, yeah, because yeah. I, I don't really care what he does. Right. I mean, you know, he can have sex with donkeys for all I care. Right. It's not my business. Right. Lucky donkey. But yeah, he's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. It's no accident. Man, man, <laughs> it's, no, it's no accident. God. And he's still doing it. He's sixty-three years old. I mean. The guy's been, I've been watching him since I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so so I, I, I just got to piece this together. On set with him, is he like goofing around with you? Hey, Frank, this is, you know, did you see he's, the game last night? Or is it all, it's, is, is it no, all but business? Not ever. It's like, he'll come on set every day and go, we're making a movie. <laughs> good to see you, Frank. Did you have a good night? Oh, I'm so excited. The day's going to be great. Wow. You were great yesterday. Like, that's his oh, vibe with everybody. Man, he knows that's everyone's Scientology name. kicking that's, in, <laughs> I, you know what? Sign me up. Me too, Frank. What are we doing? Sign Did me up. Did you see him doing the jump ropes? Oh, he's the got scene? the train everything. Uh, what, what, guys, what does he do? He does jump ropes right before the scene. No, he stuff. works out. I mean, he used to. Well, he used to. But, right on uh, set, they say. I've heard. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, he's got a trailer bigger than Equinox. Like, it's ridiculous. Oh, and his man. trainer's there, and he's... You never seen a guy like this. Like he's like yeah. it's like he's an alien. He's not. Real. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I want to see a picture of him sleeping. Do you think he sleeps? He doesn't. He Last don't. night, my son and I put on the Formula One. Netflix has a Formula One show, and I'm watching. You know, they're in the uh, what's his Mercedes. They're in their whatever camp, whatever they call the thing. And uh, and there he is. All right. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton is there, and there's Tom Cruise. I'm like, right. the guy is everywhere. Do you think there's ever been a moment in your life ever where in that exact moment you were doing something better than Tom Cruise was no, doing? Never. <laughs> 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 Never ever, not even close. Uh, and by the way, right now, though, at right, his worst, he's doing all cast. Yes, yes, yes he's doing finally. <laughs> <laughs> you're a fucking good dude, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, we we often talk about these guys. I really haven't been in the presence of someone that like he, like right. they say that about Brad Pitt. You ever, you ever been around him? Yeah, but he's a different guy. He's yeah. he's he's a little more. Also, brilliant guy, and you know, a little more laid back uh, from when I've been around him. Yeah, and uh, you, you, he's got yeah. it down. You know, he's bright. These guys, uh, you know, I remember reading that book, Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's no accident to success, right? But, yeah. Oh, you got lucky. I'm like, no, he didn't. Yeah, it's maybe he got lucky a right. little bit. Luck ain't carrying you to be become Brad Pitt, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and so I'm just fascinated by the because I know how difficult it is to even be a working actor like you know what it takes to 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 become that thing yeah is uh, you know then again it's all consuming like his relationship with his kids isn't like your relationship with yeah, your yeah, kids yeah. and you're a big star like you're a, you're a, you're a, you're, a, you're at the top of the food chain in comedy oh, yeah. but these guys are there's something else. I mean, they're like, I, I, I can't explain it, you know? It's, it's that laid back thing, you know? Like, he's I get yeah. that because, you know, he did interview with a vampire with Tom Cruise and never worked with him again because Tom Cruise probably came on and said, we're making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt's like, last one with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's tough. You put two guys like that together. Yeah. It's tough. Dude, yeah. that's what you are to uh, to us. No. <laughs> like, these guys you're talking <laughs> about, you got man. that glow. You're I, a no, lesbian. Man. Get dude. out of here. Right? Yeah. Like, as soon as you I couldn't up. be more regular, excuse me, blue collar, not damaged. Regular, no, I no. am just, I come from, eh, Dad, should I rake the lawn? Dad, uh, you know, it's not, these guys have been acting since they're seven. Well, well, you talk about acting, and were you always in the acting world? Was there no? A I threw a ball when I was a kid. Okay, so so so, how do we get from wheelbarrow, immigrant parents, ball right. to Guiding starting? Were, were you doing? Uh, were you do, were you ever a nine to fiver? 
No. No, I worked on, when I was in college, I worked on Wall Street for a minute. Uh, and I, I, that's when I was like, I'll never do this. I'll never do this, right? Because I went to school for finance. And um, I was cute when I was young. <laughs> so I got approached by like different modeling people in New York. And that kind of started this, that, and a third. And then I, they started offering me commercials. And then I was like the Budweiser guy. Or the Coors guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute. And then people kept asking me if I was an actor. I'm like, huh? Yeah. yeah. I'm an actor. Yeah. And then instead of fucking around, I took all that money and I found the best acting coaches I could in New York. And New York, unlike LA, has great acting coaches. And I kind of submerged myself into it and, and got obsessed. And then I got offered a soap opera and took it. And, and my friends were like, what are you doing? Don't do that. I'm like, it's $2,500 a day. They're guaranteeing me three days a week. That's right there, more money than my father's ever made in a year. Uh, I'm taking it. Yeah. And I did. And, you know, whatever. I did a soap opera for a couple of years, and I met yeah. my wife. <laughs> so it was good. Yeah. <laughs> did your friends, were they kind of the nine to five guys? Are no. You, are you one uh, of the yeah, guys they that- would, They were like, nine to five guys. But the friends that I had made then, because I was in acting and I was doing little plays- I had a little group of, of New York friends that were theater guys and would never do a soap opera. Right. Meanwhile, I've never seen them again. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one went to Juilliard? Which one went to NYU Theater? You know what I mean? Yeah. Where yeah. are they? are selling BMWs. Right, right. right. <laughs> and here I am with you. That's it, baby. <laughs> Talking about houses, yeah. multiple. Hey, Jimmy, I hope you're listening, pal. <laughs> so, uh, you being older like we are, social media, you seem to be very active on it. You, you know, you mean, you, you, yeah. you do a thing on social media. I don't know if it's planned, but I don't know if you've seen his oh, social man. media. He'll, 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 He'll put up the phone and then he'll he'll put the the record on and he'll go oh hey <laughs> like, like he like, I love it. I'm the dumbest person that's I that's a great little stick like man. the phone interrupted it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. right? you want to know something funny I've been doing this now for a couple of years right yeah, yeah. And, and I swear to God people text me and they'll write me and they'll say hey. Did you not know the camera was on? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, oh my God. Don't vote. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't vote. <laughs> don't have kids. <laughs> there was one post he made, right, which was, I, I, I didn't, it, it, it caught me by surprise. He is in, you're in like a convertible. I think you drive a convertible, right? Was it a convertible? I have a, a Bronco and a, I have another, yeah, I have a couple of cars that are, have no top. Okay, yeah, no top. So he's, he's doing this video. Bronco, of course he has a Bronco. <laughs> of course, why wouldn't you? <laughs> he goes, something guys you know and live in Los Angeles, you could go downtown and get flowers for cheaper than you would, uh, you know, at Conway's or where, Conroy's, whatever the hell it is. And he's got a bouquet <laughs> yeah. of flowers yeah. in the passenger seat, which is was the complete antithesis of like <laughs> this, I right? Love flowers. <laughs> this what? I love flowers. Really? Yeah. So when you buy flowers, yeah. do you go home and arrange them? Oh my God. You got when you come over to my you guys will come I have fight nights all the time. You guys gotta come. I live oh. right around the corner. Oh man. I have flowers everywhere. They make yeah. me very happy. They keep you from beating people up. No. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm getting out of that, right? No, they keep me, they keep, they ch there's something about flowers that I've always just, I I, I feel good about them. Right. I do. I like, I like buying them. I, yeah. And you plant them. Oh, no, just, no, no, they're, uh, no, oh, they're dead. Oh, 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 you buy the ones that just sit around. Like, like you buy yourself flowers like a man. No, I don't just buy flowers. I go to the flower mart in uh, downtown LA where there's a lot of bad, not uh, nice people. Yeah. And I that can, is yeah. crazy that yeah. you guys. It's very peculiar, man. By the way, you can go to Bristol Farms down the street and buy a little bouquet of sunflowers. You know sunflowers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Twenty-three dollars. Right. I go down, I could fill up my truck for twenty-three dollars, and they're ten times better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, yeah so, so he's a, so the, the, this whole flower thing is fascinating because Lana, my wife, says, you know, we should have some flowers around the house. It it makes you feel a certain way. It does. My question to you is, who turned you on to flowers? And, and there's something that, you, you just did it? I, I, like when my wife and I, we bought a house in the Palisades, right? Mm -hmm. I decorated the house. I did everything. I bought the, whatever vase 
that I left there. Uh, whatever painting on the wall, I bought everything. I designed the house. Like I love. I would never I, marry you. You do. You're too much. No, I, I love. You, you never <laughs> relax. I cut you're my always, kids' hair. Yeah. That's oh, he saying, fucking does he? Just to take I cut back. my kids' hair. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, right. now they're older, so they're like, don't come near me with a right. scissor. But right. I cut their hair. I love right. to cut hair. Right. I, I love flowers. Yeah. I love interior design. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> do you build? Do, could you? Of course, could, he builds. No, wait. No, you know, no. it's one thing I do not do. Oh, really? I would have pegged him for like a tool belt on a Saturday. I got all the tools. I got a bandsaw. I got everything. Right. And my guys come over and they could use my tools. But I, I, you know, I found that in L.A., you can go to Home Depot and there's like. A bunch of Mexican guys who are amazing carpenters mm -hmm. and they're grateful for the work and they they not curse they don't you know they're not they're not angry when they you know hit their hand with the nail and yeah. and they do a fantastic job and yeah. they've I've, I've had so many guys come to my house and do beautiful work and yeah. I've saved myself Ajita. Wow, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. Yeah, nah, he's having Mexican guys build a shed while he's arranging flowers. Wow. I mean, what That's exactly it's right? It's like uh, the, the head of a mafia in a movie or something, <laughs> right? By the way, they're the best, they're oh. great people, and they're, I love the fact that, listen, they need the money, right? Yeah. They need the money, and they got families, and they wind up coming to my house, I become friends with them, and they sometimes, I got one guy there, my friend Melvin, doesn't speak a lick of English. My girlfriend now is from Brazil, so she speaks Spanish, so the, the whole, I don't even know what they're talking about. And evidently, I I, I ordered you're, a little. Can I just point out? You say you're a regular guy. You're not like those movie stars. I said you're dating a 35 year old Brazilian. No, no, bro, 30. 30. 30. 30. Yeah, bring it down. <laughs> Somebody recently said to me, "She's 30. When when she's 45, you'll be. I'll, I'll be. I'll be on my next girlfriend." <laughs> <laughs> now I've learned something from her, and this is a beautiful thing to be a man who could still, you know, my father's right. looking down at me, going, "Good for you." Now, <laughs> to, to stay in the shape and be have women that age be attracted to you, right? You say like you, you filmed in Croatia, right? You yeah. Said, so I would imagine you've spent a lifetime of on movie sets of getting up before sunrise and working out before you go to the Always. movies, right? Yeah. So I would imagine there's been some running in some dicey neighborhoods around the world in your lifetime. Yeah, dicey gyms, dicey neighborhoods. So, like, if, when you're running in Croatia, hypothetically, at 5.30 in the morning, yeah. knowing your skill set, is there a party you like, yeah, it would be nice to get mugged right now just no, to I break mean, up you know, the listen, dance. here's the deal. <laughs> I'm also, you know, we're from New York. You walk past somebody, you look right in the face. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I'm running yeah. past you. I'm like, what? What are you going to do? Yeah. You shoot me? If you shoot me, you shoot me. But other than that, you got to So, where was the most dangerous place you ever felt? Like, not, not the set, but like Africa. being there. Africa. Really? Yeah. When I went to Africa. S uh, South Africa, yeah. When I, I did a movie in Cape Town, and I was like the sun hadn't come up, and Cape Town kind of looks like L.A. And I'm I leave the hotel, and I'm running past the desk, and he goes, "Excuse me, sir, where are you going?" I said, "I'm going to go for a run." He goes, "No run." <laughs> I, I go, "Why no run?" He goes, "You white." <laughs> no run, no run. I go, oh, no run, no. He goes, no, very dangerous. Whoa. And I was, and that kind of made me a little nervous. Like, like I was in Africa, <laughs> so I did go running. You did. And I, I did not go running again after that. I oh. got it because there were a lot of people outside. But you went running after he said that. Yeah. I went out the back. Look at that. No one yeah. tells Frankie G you <laughs> can't no, no. run. The guy right? was right. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, maybe I'm in over my head. <laughs> There's only so much jujitsu you can do. <laughs> Someone tells me don't go running and I'm in Ohio, I go back to my room. <laughs> and pack. <laughs> yeah. If I'm someplace where I can't run, I'm leaving that place immediately, right? It is freaking. The other thing is I'm always crying too. Like I'm that guy. I could be that guy. And then I'm, I'm at home all the time oh, crying. I oh. cry over everything. Oh my so, so, god, bro, bro! Did you guys separate at birth? <laughs> I cry <laughs> like I, you know, my my. I have a son who's uh, who's nineteen. He's going to a, uh, he he's been in special schools his whole life. He petitioned to go to Pali High his last year, senior year. He got in, and they had a program, and he graduated from Pali High. And he was so proud what of himself. That? What's that? What's that school? Pali High, Pali Pali Palisades High School. Oh, big school, right? So now he's going to this program, he's in college, he's going to this program that UCLA, UCLA offers, it's called Pathways, and it's partially it's life skills, because we need him to be independent, and, and then education. And he's having a difficult time, like, accepting, like, what's going on. Yeah. And when I tell you, he talks to me, and I, I, I go, it's going to be fine, and I got to go in the bathroom, and I'm like... 
yeah. like wh- yeah. you know because you're yeah. only as happy as your least happy child uh, it's a, period and it's a and so if i know my son is feeling bad about something or i can't take it's like right. i can, i just i'm i fold yeah, I, yeah. I really do and my ex-wife god bless you she's an amazing mother she kind of picks up the slack because I'll let them do. I'll say you can stay home with me. I'll buy you. I'll buy you a pet shop. <laughs> yeah, I'll right, buy you. Right. I'll buy you. What's put that pet store? I will buy. I'll do three Nicolas Cage movies, and I will buy you that pet Petco because yeah. he loves animals. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, don't worry about it. You're yeah. not going to go. You know, sell widgets. Right. You know what I mean. So, do you feel like you have to be? I mean, are you one to cry around your kids, or is that a moment for you that you got to like? Right, let me regroup. They, they can't really see that daddy's having a tough time with this, or do you just? That's a great question. Uh, how do you? Both. Hand- both. Both. Um, you know, today I'm going to bring you guys really way down now. A year ago to the day, my he's he's my biological cousin, my father's brother's son, but we grew up in the same house. A year ago today, he shot and killed himself. He left my house on a Thursday and shot himself on Saturday. And I, we slept in the same bed together. And so I want to make it an open dialogue in my house about what this is, what suicide is and how it affects a family. And, and, and they see me cry about it, you mm-hmm. know? But other things where I'm crying and it relates to them, never. I don't let them see. I, I'm, t- I'm not kidding you when I tell you, I'm always crying. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just, I'm amazed at my children as we all are. And, and when, and it's terrible, but when they I see a little bit of suffering, I can't, I can't deal with them suffering. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what I no, mean? I hear you. And, and, uh, but I don't want them to see, cause I don't want them to get nervous about themselves. <laughs> what about the, the reverse one? Do you let them see, cause this is the one I do, the happy cry when you're just so happy in a moment with your family. Oh, you got, yeah, oh you, you, absolutely. Yeah. If, if that happens, absolutely. Yeah. We're very, well, we're Italian, man. I mean, we're, we're emotional people, yeah. you know, and uh, sometimes too emotional, yeah. but they see it all, you know, yeah. and I've apologized to my children a lot too, because I stopped drinking about a year ago, but before that, I mean, I was drinking a bottle of wine a day, right? Wow. And it affects your behavior. I didn't think so because I only drank wine, yeah. rosé. Rose. Yeah, for the cholesterol. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I would, I have to apologize, you know, and, and I think that's important too, like to let your kids know you've made mistakes and it's mm-hmm. okay. Like, I'm sorry I behaved that way. I'm sorry I said that. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I was being sarcastic. Funny because uh, I I share the same sensitivity you do in the sense that not that I'm crying every day but I'm more apt to crying than my wife right right and uh, I never saw that growing up my father was not crying at all but now he's crying all the time right how so, old is your father seventy seven yeah so it's like I don't know if he in his older age has clicked into a sensitivity that he never had access before, but I've always had access to it. And I wonder sometimes if your kid sees you crying, which I don't hide it. There's no way I could hide it because it comes and it's like, it's right. daddy, it's involuntary. daddy's, daddy's yeah, crying. Yeah, right, yeah. Why is he crying? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I've often gone, Oh, is this, is this, because again, as a man, just there's a connotation of you, especially growing up the way I did. Me too. Uh, you know, you don't you don't cry. No, what you are you crying for? <laughs> yeah. 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 Your baby. Yeah. They used to call you, you know, and right. by the way, that this was before woke. Right. So my father would call me things that were not nice. Oh, you're, you're clipping flowers and crying <laughs> at the same time. And then you're going off and making a Nick Cage movie. By the way, what the fuck is going by, on? By the way, <laughs> if you are out there buying flowers, and this is a, a you listen to me. Always clip the bottom of the flowers. Yeah. Always clip the bottom of the flowers on an angle before you oh. put them in the vase. Now, when you fill up the vase, do you fill it with water or do you just use your tear drops? <laughs> 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 no, because salt isn't good for the flowers. <laughs> You're also the last man I've seen with a pompadour. I love no, it. I, just came from the I gym. love the way it bounces. No, when I, you I, talk. it's dirty. Is, it's is, that, is, that, is that your, your hair or, or did you have transplants? Or did, were, I, I, Honest to God, Brian Callen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've, I've had transplants. They took it from here and really, put it, yeah, here. But they're falling. It, it's falling. The stuff it, it's falling out. Not the transplant. The other hair. So I might have to redo it. I'm just asking you. I, I see no. the, the, no. your hair has its own life, yeah. right? Yeah, should, and I never it dye it. Own, I, it should have its own Twitter hair. I never, I never put any color in it either. It's, it's that, it. that, that's 58, that's and that, that's that's, that's, that's it. Oh, that's amazing. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I think Rulo just lied. 
I wish we had a lie detector. <laughs> on my children's eyes. I know it's your hair and I love it, but never never, never with the men's hair club. Never uh, going through club. your garbage tonight. Ask, ask anyone who really knows me. Wow. Never. I mean, wow. I've dyed my hair when I was a kid for a movie, but yeah. never. I don't Yeah, your beard's much. pretty dark still, too, yeah, man. Yeah, it's got gray. Man, dude, it's good. God. I, I'm not good. My father man. died. He was 73 years old. He had black. He looked like Elvis. So are wow. you taking like some sort of I take pill everything I be anybody says to take. <laughs> oh, <right>. No. No. <laughs> I take peptides. You even got the De Niro birthmark on the right what? side below the dick. Yeah, you see that? And on the other side. Jeez, you hey, lucky don't. guy. You look in the mirror and go, I'm so... Look at that. <laughs> you know, I'm going to leave you on this. And I got to ask you, what brand of t-shirt is that? It, 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 <laughs> isn't it? it it's a so deep good. V and, and it just it just kind of flows <laughs> off know. the body. I don't know. It, 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 any it, of my clothes are from films. So I don't yeah. I don't. No, well, like, you just, it's like you just take stuff. it from the set? What's it's the deal? deal? What's that? Oh, okay. In the deal, whatever you yeah, wear. Oh, wow. wow. In my deal, yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm stealing t shirts going. This no, just crazy. put it in your deal. Yeah. Yeah. Deal. What the fuck? <laughs> I barely get money for these movies. Uh, put it in the deal. <laughs> um, listen, bro. We, it's again, been a pleasure, it's, man. It's, oh, been, it's been it, my pleasure. Yeah. And, I, you know, I was so excited when, when uh, you reached out. I was like, oh, I'm such a big fan. And, and uh, you know, it's just like. You know, I watch you guys all the time. I listen. I watch. I've seen every comedy special you've done, and and we, you know, we met a while back and have mutual friends. And I was just so jazzed to come on. Well, and, uh, bro, we appreciate you taking the time out. And you know, I, I don't say this to a lot of people, but we're always looking for new friends, right? And even though we're we're fifty, fifty eight years old, whatever we are. We we do we do a lot here at the house uh, when it comes to entertaining. We'd love to have you and your thirty year old Brazilian girl <laughs> <to> come <laughs> on. We'd love to learn some Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, Don't forget to bring flowers. <laughs> <when you're laughs> I, was, I was telling him I was going to bring because when you're uh, an Italian from the East Coast, you had coffee and cake. My mother, right. you know, what's happening? We're having coffee. Who's coming? We have company. Right. We're having coffee and cake. And there was always an Entenmann's crumb cake on, right. on yeah. the, or, or fry offer if they could afford it. And uh, so I went to the grocery store to get an Entenmann's crumb cake. And you know, they don't, they didn't have the fucking Entenmann's. It's hard. It's hard to find out here. Terrible. Yeah. So if Frank comes to a party, you guys can step off for a little while and go cry in a corner. And then <laughs> That's what I'm, like. <laughs> I'm hoping we get Frank to cry in front of, because my, my, Lana don't cry. It, it, even when I cry, <laughs> I'm crying, but I have the wherewithal to look at her going, this yeah. ain't making you cry. Right. I know. Right? I'm so, breaking down. Yeah, yeah, like when I see somebody cry, generally speaking, I follow Keep suit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And my wife don't have that ability to do that. So yeah. I want to have you come over, tell a story, you cry. I tear up. And I want to see yeah. if she cries when you cry. That would be the test. She doesn't cry when I cry. <laughs> I mean, my whole face just goes, I go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's contorted. I believe it, bro. You don't even audition anymore. You just <laughs> no, get offers. Yeah. Offer only. Offer only. Get the memo. Yeah.